Hey guys, welcome to Crown Breakdown, the short video show where we talk Charlotte FC. My name is Maxwell. Let's jump right in. Enzo Capetti, is he not living up to expectations? Is he something different than we thought we were going to see? Now Charlotte FC knew exactly what they were getting with Enzo Capetti. They're getting a very traditional forward who's going to be that target man. And there's a couple areas that he does really well at. Um, first of those being that he's going to be the outlet for the team. So when they're pinned back or when they're trying to break in transition, that they can play a long ball to him. And he can do two things. Um, either hold up with his physical play while he waits for his teammates to take the space and uh, you know reinforcements to arrive, or get in behind with the long ball, beat the defender, and get to the goal. Uh, with that too, he's also going to be occupying the center backs. Again, it's his very uh, physical nature that lets him do this effectively to create space for his other teammates to take a shot. He's also going to be kind of that fox in the box, play off the shoulder of the defender, um, lose him to create his own space for a goal. Then he's going to use his high work rate and high energy to be the front of the high press, which they're using to create turnovers high up the pitch that then they can convert into opportunities. Now, a lot of these areas don't really show up well on the stat sheet. Um, so a lot of times we'll think that, oh, well, Capetti didn't really have a good game. When other players around him are excelling, a lot of it is because of his work rate and what he is doing off the ball. But let's take a look at some of these stats anyways. As of match day nine, Capetti is currently third in uh, shot chances created, um, only behind Yusviak and Vargas, the wingers, which makes sense. Uh, and then what I think is interesting as well He's way ahead at progressive passes received. So balls coming up the pitch, he's received more of those than anybody else. Okay, well, let's take a look at some of these five areas I just mentioned. We're going to start with uh, Capetti's holdup play. All right, so this is going to be a clip from, uh, from the Columbus game. Here's Capetti right here, number nine. He's going to receive the ball. Nice physical play to draw the defenders, allow space for Swiderski and the other players to keep running. Boom. All right, we're going to see a little bit more of the same in this next clip. Doesn't quite get it off, but... Uh, so he's going to be the outlet of the long ball here, chases it down one-on-one -on -one with the defender, realizes he's been pushed to the outside, and then he decides to turn, hold up the ball, and before he passes it, he's got right here one, two, three guys around him that he's been closed down, leaves Swiderski wide open for the pass here. This one's just a short and sweet layoff pass. But while he's holding up against Abubakar here, the other defender comes in, closes down on him. And if you notice right there, that this defender leaves Swiderski as he steps out because of his holdup play right here. And as he takes a step away, Capetti passes the ball to the open Carol Swiderski to take the shot. Fortunately, it's deflected on that one. Okay, now along these same lines of being the outlet, that Capetti in that one side is gonna be the holdup play physically wait for reinforcements lay the ball off to somebody else he can also get in behind and be that direct outlet to give himself a chance um, like his goal against Orlando here the long ball over the top beats the defender puts this one away okay here we go again from a different angle sorry for the fuzz there beats the defender gets in behind Here's another example of him getting in behind. This one's from the Columbus game. To shout out this great pass from Marks here. But beats his defender there, turns, lays it off for Bender. Probably should have shot that sooner. But that chance was all on Marks and Capetti creating this opportunity. And here we go again. This is going to be a good example of both of his ability to be the outlet, both in his holdup play and getting in behind. They're pinned deep. Long ball. Capetti holds up, beats the defender to receive the ball, plays it off, and then gets in behind for an opportunity. He gets pulled down here. This one gets called for offside anyways. He's close, uh, but that's, that's what we're wanting him to do.
Now what we also like to see Capetti doing too is occupying the center backs and creating space for others. Now he can do that a couple different ways if he's taking the ball into this box himself. Um, a lot of times just by nature of him being the DP striker, a dangerous player, it will draw other defenders around him so that he can lay it off to one of our other attackers. Or what he can do is kind of close down the defender and tie him up kind of hockey style in front of the net with his physical play. Um, back him down so that they're unable to be a part of the play, freeing up one of our other attackers to get in behind. Now let's take a look at one example of this. This one's going to be him drawing in the defenders. Gaines doesn't finish that one, but with his cut into the box here, that he sucks all three defenders with him. No one's paying attention to Gaines right here in the middle of the box. Something Enzo Capetti does really well. Now we're going to take a look at two more examples of this. This one's going to be more of that hockey style tie up um, to create space for the other attackers. You see him right here tied up with this defender to leave Yusviak one on one. There we go. And here we go again. Ball coming in. Capetti isn't doing anything too threatening right now. He's just running at the uh, the defensive line um, with Vargas. A lot of teams do their scouting report. They know that he's going to try and put it on his right foot to either take a shot or put a cross in the box. And that's what uh, Bradley's looking for right here. As soon as he gets it on his right foot, he's looking for who he's going to pass that to. So both of them close down Capetti, leaving Yusvac again on the one-on-one, -on -one, able to put it away. All right, now he's also good at being that kind of fox in the box player playing off the shoulder of the center back to lose the defenders and create opportunities for himself. This is that first goal he scored against St. Louis. And if you see the moves he, he makes to put off the defenders right here, that he's got all three of them looking at him. He cuts way out to the outside, then he number two takes a peek there and as he takes a peek he cuts back inside 26 doesn't even know he's there puts it away a great header there all right now this chance it doesn't get put away but similar idea he's all the way up here watch him and number two runs off of his shoulder into that space and then the chance doesn't come to anything there, but he just gets around that defender. Karol Swiderski could have laid it off into the box for him. And then that last thing that we want to talk about is his high pressing ability. They don't call him the tank for nothing, that he's got a lot of energy and he just keeps running, 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 whether it's making those runs um, in behind to try and be that outlet or on defense that he's being that high pressure to try and create chances. So let's take a look at one of these examples here. Orlando's on the ball, Capetti presses, defender makes a mistake that he's able to take advantage of, and they are able to turn it into an opportunity. And here's another example of his high press here. That he doesn't give up on it, goalkeeper plays a bad pass, he's able to pick up the ball. Final product isn't there again, which you know, has been lacking from the team in general all season long. Now, does all this make Capetti an effective player for Charlotte? I think the answer is yes. Um, as we know, the attack just hasn't been there for Charlotte this season. The decision making in the final third just hasn't quite been there. Um, it's been clicking a little bit more now. The last couple of games, they've been able to score goals. They put four past Tormenta. Yes, it's a lower league team, but I think it's going to help build the guy's confidence. What also is helping more now, if you take a look at the previous matches compared to these last few where Latanzio has actually let Swiderski play basically that second striker position that he's letting them kind of interchange more. It's helping Capetti get more service and more involved so he's not just kind of the lone man up front. And if we look back at the passing map against Orlando where he did have a really good game as well, it was kind of the same that he wasn't alone up top. So I think going forward um, he's going to have a lot more chances as our offense continues to build and he's going to start 
you know, putting a lot of these chances away when they come to him. That's the thing is that he's been getting passes and then that final ball just hasn't been there for him to put away. I think Capetti's got at least 10 goals in him this season. Um, that he's going to be one of our top goal scorers, probably next to Swiderski. That's it for this time, guys. Thanks for watching. If there's anything you want me to address in future videos, drop it in the comments. Let me know what it is, and we'll see if we can work that into one of the future videos. Until next time.